Welcome to another video. I came across this question today and I thought it was interesting. And um, when I gave it a shot, I discovered that there's nothing special about this problem. You can solve it any how you like, but I want to show you how I solved it and what exactly is the problem asking. It's saying if you're given f of x to be defined as 4 minus x over 2x minus 4. And you also know that f of c plus x multiplied by f of c minus x is going to give you a constant d and c also is a constant. So these two are not changing. They are constant numbers c and d. Find the constants c and d. Now when a question looks this scary, it means it is easy to find the answer. So my recommendation is give it a shot before continuing to watch the video. Now, if you're not interested in giving it a shot, let's just go together. Let's get into it. My first strategy is to see what happens when I compute f of c plus d and when I compute f of c, sorry, f of c plus x and f of c minus x. All I know is that the input, what does f do to x? Well, what it does to it is to subtract it from 4 and then divide the result by 2 times the input minus 4. So if I do the same thing to this and this and multiply them together, I should get d, right? Maybe something beautiful is going to show up. So let's do that. So we know that f of c plus x will actually become 4 minus the input c plus x divided by what would this be this is going to be 2 times c plus x minus 4 okay let's do the other one what about f of c minus x well it's going to be the same thing 4 minus c minus x divided by 2 times c minus x minus 4. And the problem says that the product of these two will be equal to a constant d. So let's try to multiply this by this. Does it look like there's an easy way to do that? I don't see any easy way, okay? so. It looks like we just have to multiply stuff together. 4 equals d. Mm. So, I'm going to distribute this negative, this sign. And I'm going to also distribute this sign here. So what I have is going to be 4 minus c minus x multiplied by 4 minus c plus x okay divided by if I multiply okay it looks like this term has 2 and this also has 2 so if I factor out 2 from here. So if I multiply this, okay, let's rewrite it. Let's write this as 2 multiplied by c plus x minus 2. Okay, so we make this a big parenthesis. So I factored out a 2. I'll do the same thing for this one. It's going to be 2. So this multiplied by 2 so they can see it. So this is c minus x minus 2, c minus x um, minus 2, okay. So based on what I have here, and this is equal to d, okay. Now, I want to try to rewrite the top so that the x's are in front, okay. Let's try and see if we can rewrite the top so the x's are in front. I'm going to make the, the positive x's rather are in front. This doesn't have a positive x, so I can as well 
switch it to a negative and then multiply by a negative. So watch what I'm going to do. This top part I'm going to write as negative. Watch it. This is going to be x. Everything that was negative becomes positive plus c minus 4. And this, so this is the same thing as this. And this one I'm going to write as x minus c plus 4. This one doesn't change, but this negative has changed this. Now, the bottom part I'm going to write as 2 times 2 is going to be 4. Now, what is left here? I can write the, let me see. I can write this one also as x, since all of them are in here. So it can be x plus c minus 2. I'm going to write it as x plus c minus 2. And down here, I'm going to write as, I want this x to be positive. So I'm going to do the same thing I did to the top part. I'm going to multiply by a negative, but I don't want to put that negative here. So I'm going to pull the negative all the way to the back and put negative 4 here so that this becomes, where is it? The bottom one now becomes x plus c becomes minus c and this becomes plus 2. Okay. And everything is equal to d. Okay. Now watch what's going to happen because this is this, the key. Or the key I found or the, that I used. This negative will cancel this negative. So what you have ultimately is we're going to have 1 over 4 multiplied by. Now look at this expression here. This is the secret to it. This can be written as x squared minus c minus 4 squared. That's it. How did I know it? Look, what you have here, you can actually write as x plus c minus 4. You can write it as x plus c minus 4 times x minus c minus 4. Look very well. This is the same thing as this. Because when you distribute this minus sign, what, what are you going to get? Minus c plus 4. Minus c plus 4. Okay, so this is the difference of two squares where one term is x, the other term is c minus 4. And that's what you have here. And that's the key. The same thing applies to the bottom. You can see this and this can be x squared minus the difference of two squares. And this is going to be c minus 2 squared. And this is equal to d. Let's go. So now, because this is a constant, I can easily cross multiply. I don't know what this is, but I can decide to multiply both sides by 4 times this. I really didn't need this, but I just wanted to focus on this. That's why I put the parenthesis. Um, I can as well just multiply the bottom by 4 and leave it that way. But now we see what's going on. So if I multiply both sides by 4, I'm going to have 4d here. Okay, let's write 4d. And then we can take care of this one. So now I can cross multiply and see what I'm going to get. I'm going to get x squared minus c minus 4 squared is equal to 4d times x squared minus, I'm going to multiply this also by 4d, 4d times c minus 2 squared. Okay. This is the only term containing x here. This is the only term containing x here. And because this was a fraction, we can use the same principle we would employ for partial fraction decomposition. Okay, you compare the sides and you go, okay, this, the coefficient of x squared here is 1. The coefficient of x squared here must be 1. So you say by comparing 
coefficients we know that 1 will be equal to 4d which implies d is equal to 1 over 4. That's the key to that. So we found d. Let's find c. c is easy now that we found d. We can easily, from this equation, find what c is. Okay? Um, definitely, this and this are the same. It means this must be equal to this. So, we can say similarly, we know that c minus 4 squared, c minus 4 squared will be equal to 4d c minus 2 squared. 4d times c minus 2 squared. But that means c minus 4 squared will be equal to, we know 4d is 4 times 1 over 4, which is just 1. So this means this is just c minus 2 squared. At this point, it will be dangerous for you to just cancel out the squares and say c minus 4 is equal to c minus 2 because that does not obey the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. You cannot say something minus 4 is the same thing as that same thing minus 2. It, for real numbers, it doesn't work. I don't think it even works in any arithmetic world. So what you do is you have to take the square roots. And you notice that we're going to get the absolute value here and get the absolute value here. So it's the absolute value that counts, the distance from zero that actually um, counts here. So we're thinking of a number whose distance from C, distance from four is the same distance from two. What number is that? Okay, now you figured out the answer that it's gonna be three, but we have to show this algebraically, okay? And if this is hard to show, you just have to, expand everything and then find your answer. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Instead of using the absolute value trick, I'm just gonna expand this and say c squared minus 8c plus 16 will be equal to c squared minus, what would this be? Minus 4c plus four. Okay, now this has c squared, this has c squared. It means we can cancel both of them so that negative 8c plus 16 will be negative 4c plus four. So bring, um, let's do this, let's move all the c's to this side. We're gonna end up with negative four c will be equal to negative 12. So that c will be negative 12 over negative four. c will be equal to three. So we found d and we found c. That's my way of solving it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. See you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.